give him what I got. I'm going to keep giving him all I got. And so when I see his face, I'm going to hear him say, well done. That's what I long to hear. I want to hear him say, well done. I don't want him to say, you was a coward. You didn't stand up for me. You were scared me of man's face. The Bible says, don't be afraid of no man. He said he has no place to sing you. But I need to be afraid of me. I can sing to the heaven or to hell. I'm the only one you should be afraid of. So I'm not afraid of no man's face. You might block in my face. You might give me the shake a little bit. But I'm not going to be afraid of you. I have no place to give you to see me. So as long as I got my life and my health and my strength, I'm going to give God praise to him. And I'm going to give him glory.
portion of the service over to the poor pig. We're going to ask Minister Sunday if he was lead us in altar prayer. Amen. Amen. Do you have the activities of your limbs? We're asking that you uh, make your way down to the altar. Amen. It is time for altar call. And if you are unable to make your way down here to the altar, we are asking that if your body convince you to, we are asking that you stand in reverence on the connection that we are about to make with God. Dear God in heaven, before we ask you for anything, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Closed in our right mind, we thank you. Some individuals were not able to wake up this morning, but we woke up and we say thank you. God, we thank you for the activities of our limbs, God. God, we thank you for our hands to be able to clap in victory and celebration of what you've done for us, God. God, we thank you for our ears to be able to hear from on high and our eyes to be able to see the many blessings that you've given to us day in and day out. God, we thank you for the breath of life, God, to be able to shout the highest praise of hallelujah. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for another day that was not promised, God. We thank you for allowing us to walk into your sanctuary one more time. Some of us may have limped in here. Some of us may have needed assistance walking in, but we walked in and we're in the building now and we say thank you. God, we thank you, thank you, thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to say thank you. God, we thank you for allowing us to see another Thanksgiving, to be able to see our friends and family and fellowship with one another. God, we thank you. God, we thank you even for the ones that are gone. We know that they made an impact on each and every one of our lives, and we say thank you for allowing your servant to be with us for however long you seem fit. Now, God, we're asking that you touch us. Now, God, touch us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, God. Touch our hearts, God. Some of us are mourning the loss of a loved one, God. Touch our spirit man, God. Our spirit man is crying out to you, God. Touch our bodies, God. Some of us are dealing with illness, God. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, send your healing power, God. Send your healing power, God. We speak healing now, God. Only by your power, God. We speak it now. Now, God, we ask that you touch and anoint our leaders. Superintendent William R. from and District Missionary Kanita Smith. Touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, God. Touch their minds, God, to be able to continue to give us wisdom from on high. Touch their hearts, God. Touch their spirits, God, and most of all, touch their bodies, God. We speak healing now to their bodies, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we're asking that you meet every need on this altar on today. Whatever the people are asking of you, God, we're asking that you need it right now, Lord. Now, God, we're asking that you just have your way. Have your way in our lives, God. Have your way in our souls, God. Have your way in our spirits, God. Have your way in our finances, God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. We need you today, God. We need you today, God. Forgive us of every sin, Lord. Forgive us of all of our wrongdoings, God. Refill us again. Resave us again. Deliver us again. God, we need you to do it. We need 
need you, God. We need you. Our souls are crying out to you, God. Our spirits are crying out to you, God. Our nation is crying out to you, God. We need you today, Lord. Not just today, but forevermore, God. Move by your power, God. Some of us may have been dealing with something that may be bothering our souls, our minds, and our spirits, God. We're asking that you take it away in the name of Jesus. Take it away in the name of Jesus. Allow us to give your name the praise. Allow us to give your name the worship, God. In the name of Jesus, send your latter rain, God. In the name of Jesus, right now, God. Right now, God. Hold us, Lord. Hold us in the midnight hour. Hold us, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, we need you. We need you. We need you, God. Let today be a day of celebration. Let today be a day of thanksgiving. Let it be today, God. Because this is the day that you have made, God. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it, God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're speaking Jesus to our situations. We're speaking Jesus to our problems. Because we know that no matter what it looks like and no matter what we may be going through, God, we have the victory. Because the devil is defeated, you are exalted. And we have the victory. So we're clapping in victory now. We're clapping to show the devil that he has been defeated. We're clapping to say that we got the victory. Now God, if you do all these things, we'll be able to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you so rightfully deserve. In Jesus' mighty and matchless, merciful name we do pray. Let everyone say amen. Go back to your seat, give it God praise. Of 
You don't really, we don't, okay. we don't see all of this the parking lot like that when we come here. Usually yeah, everybody is acting up. Uh, uh, here they come. They're coming in at, they're coming in at 12.30. Everybody's a cast up. They're offered long. Here they come here. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and they miss the most important part of the service. That's in giving thanks unto God and helping build in the kingdom. But just think of all the stuff you went through and the battles that you done went through and now you're good, everything is fine. Nobody's really got no problems in the house. The kids are doing well. They ain't no real bad grades. Everybody's walking around good. And now it's Sunday and everybody want to sit down on God. Trying to figure out what you got in your purse. Just be happy that you got it. But see, you did, for me, I, I, I go all week working and fighting to get here. And I just realized, I really do love God. Because this guy is messing with me. Even the day that I don't fought all week to get to. I don't fought all week to get to this day. And now he want to mess with me. Because I love God. That guy don't like me because I love God. I ain't did nothing to him. All I did was love God. You know, I, I, I don't have a problem with you and God. That's you and God's problem. I love God because I love God. He wants to bother me. You know, get, get behind me. I'm not, but see, I fight this dude all the time. So what I do with him, hey, when I get up, I'm stepping up to the plate. I'm, I'm ready to hit a home run. So I'm going to get this dude. Because he don't like me. But uh, don't don't stop me because you was up there and you can't get back. Amen. That ain't my fault. You mad at me because you done went somewhere that I'm trying to go. Hey, I love God. Thank you. And the fight that I'm in is a spiritual warfare because physically everything is all right. I, I don't feel none of the, the, the cancer. I don't feel none of that. Rejuvenated. I'm rejuvenated all of that. But my child is because I got up and I was saying, man, God, I need more church. Now, he done hit the physical part of me. But I pressed my weight. I pressed my weight. Because God, I'm in the church now. See, now I'm in the hospital. I'm in the hospital now. The little bit of legs that I do got, they ain't, the knees ain't hurt me. Oh, 
your work this day. Don't let nobody stop you. What do I care if they don't like the way you do it the way you want to do it? And I'm going to do it the way I do it.
this time around, as you look to prepare your mind to hold at this time, I will receive a call from the same calls for amen. Amen. Please, when we say our pastor at this time, our leader, superintendent, where you from? Somebody say, have your way, Lord.
y'all running back to the towels or something. Okay. I was 
looking for her. Glad to see you all. Pray for the Clay family and the church. I can't remember the name. St. John. Pray for St. John's. That church was always in our district. As long as the pastor before her was alive. The pastor that started that church, we were in Prince of Peace Church of God in Christ together. And then when he went and started his church, he joined the district that I was in and he was there for years. Amen. And uh, of course, Sister Clay was always a member of the Central District when up there, I think. I think it was the superintendent. Whatever, he became the bishop. Things. But she's gone over. She's crossed over. Yeah. Yeah. I called my daughter in law this morning and told her that Pastor Clay had passed. And she could not believe it. But my daughter in Los Angeles, my daughter in law in Los Angeles, my other daughter in law is in Oakland who was a member of Pastor Clay's church. So I didn't want to call Paula because I didn't feel like dealing with nobody that's going into hysterics. Sometimes people hear news, they can't take it. So I said, I'm not calling, I'll let you call. She said, well, why are you gonna make me call? I don't wanna call, I don't wanna be. Amen, but if, if you lived, the, the, the truth of the matter, I'm saved right now. I know who I am. When you're really saved, y'all remember this. You're not afraid of death. What you're interested in is living. You're not going around thinking about when I'm going to die. The only thing you do about when you're going to die is make sure you make preparations so that the people you leave behind don't be struggling figuring out how they're going to bury you. Leave some insurance or something. Thank, thank God my brain gravesite been paid for already. Another Emma Hastings and Mother Blackwell and them and other whoever they were, my grave site's paid for. Now y'all make sure somebody else don't have to use it before I do. Get off on all that stress. Stop fussing and fighting. Start showing some love. Look at somebody and say, I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm gonna stay with my script. The day I wrote this message many years ago at the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I was gonna talk about a real conversion experience. And I decided, no, not to do that. And then I said, well, okay, I'll talk about when sin is finished. But the damage it would do, and I said, well, no, I don't want to do that because somebody would think I'm picking on them. You know, I said, I ought to just preach God never fails. Shabika told me, God never fails. So I said, and he said, that's always good. Sister from Arizona, Sister Barnes' sister, can't help it. She is a preacher. She be, can't take it. She can preach. You mean they call it whatever you want to call it? The girl can preach. Whether she's standing up here or sitting down there on a chair, if you got it, you got it. He he's turning into a preacher. I have his record, a CD that he, not, it's a DVD, CD, I have a CD he made, he can preach and teach. 
Asante traveled with me all the time. He could preach. My son, Minister Ephraim, when he become more comfortable, he'll be some kind of a preacher. Minister Mathis is already a preacher. He just got to get past certain elements so he don't talk about that every time he get up. You at home, I can talk to you. So you don't do that when you leave. Elder Babies is destined to preach. He's got tattoos and all of that. But you got to fix certain things. Everybody know Elder Hastings is a preacher. Amen. I'm a deacon that God called to preach. I was a good deacon. He called me to preach because he couldn't get anyone to stay at the church down here in Colorado Springs at that 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, 48 years ago. No one would stay. I was a good deacon. I was the chairman of the deacon board of a, one of the greatest churches that had been developed in the state of Colorado. It was called Progressive Church of God in Christ. My pastor sent six folks down here. None of them would stay. Because they didn't have no members. There no offering. And it was a rough place to be. And so the Lord called me into ministry. And I was happy. And then my pastor sent me down here to Colorado Springs. I came down here, told, I told my pastor, I said, I don't have no love for those folks. Y'all turn the heat off. I already cut it off back there. You did it? Okay. I said, I can't preach to people I don't love. I can't serve. I didn't say preach. I said, I can't serve a place in a place where I don't love the people. So I came back, went back to Denver, my nice, beautiful home, my great job with the Greyhound bus lines. I was a supervisor, well, only black within a 500, 900 miles that was in the supervisory position with a, what do you call those companies when they're up there with the Fortune 500 companies? Worked my way from the dust to be in charge. And the Lord called me into ministry. Pastor sent me down here again. I've been here ever since. You don't know where you're going to wind up at. If you obey God. And so I know who I am. God prepares you. He puts things in you, men of God and women of God, that never leave your mind. Whether you're in the club or you're on the airplane or fighting with your wife or husband or at school, Something inside of you lets you know who you really are. And whoever that person is you portraying now is really not the real you. The real you is locked up trying to get out. And if you've heard the call of God on your life, you're never going to be happy until you answer the call. I got about three things I'm going to talk about and I'm going to be done. First, you got to know who you are. Secondly, if you live in this world, you're going to have some trouble. And thirdly, if you hold on to God, he will bring you out. There are some things you got to know for yourself. And when I finish, I want you to know a little bit more about Jesus. One of the things you ought to know is who you are. One of the major problems of our time is that people don't know who they are. Satan has cast a cloud over mankind and clouded his vision so that he's unable to see who he really is. Genesis 2 and 7, when man fell in the Garden of Eden, he was just a child. You can be grown and still ain't grown up. 
See them men that got a child's mind? They think mama's still supposed to give them some money. They think you still supposed to buy gas for their car. They think you still supposed to buy their cigarettes. They in a grown up body, but they're still children. She still thinks you're supposed to take care of her, and she got a man. And, and some, some ain't grew up, they ain't, y'all don't mind my English, they ain't grown up yet. They done got married. And they still think you're supposed to take care of them. They don't know who they're supposed to be. They still trying to be kids. And they got kids that's looking at them. Got it. The devil and cast the cloud over folk. Yeah. That's it. Cloud of his vision. Mm -hmm. So he can't see who he really is. Adam and Eve in the garden, they were they hadn't grown up yet. Amen. I really am God's kid. I really am yeah. one of the king's kids. Right. And if I'm one of the king's kid, I'm really not supposed to be. Hungry and poor. Yeah. So something happened to me that fixed me to where I can't obtain my real destiny. Yeah. But my real destiny is not wrapped up in poverty yeah. and pain. Uh, all right. mm. But the devil kidnapped our parents. <clears throat> so we were born in captivity. Yeah. But we know by instinct even though we're not free, we know we ought to be free. Yeah. Something inside of me says, I'm not supposed to get sick. Uh -huh. My body is fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. My body was designed to heal its own self. If I cut my finger, it's built into me for my blood to clot and stop the bleeding. If something happens to me foreign on the inside of my body, the white blood cells in my body rush to the point of injury to heal the infection. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not supposed to get sick. Something inside of me tells me I'm not supposed to get old and die. Something is out of order. But I can't seem to do anything about it. But I know this can't be how God planned it. Something happened to my parents in the garden. Mm. They didn't get fully grown yes. before Satan tricked them. Okay. Like he tricking some of us now. Uh -huh. oh, he never changed his game plan. Uh -huh. He hates God. Yes. So he wants to defile the apple of God's eye. Uh -huh. yes. And that's us. That's us. That's us. Something happened to him. You see... God's entire work of creation took place through three stages. Evening, night, and morning. There are three stages of growth. The formation stage, the growth stage, and the stage of completion. So all creatures attain perfection going through the formation growth and completion stages. Yeah. This constitutes the growth period. Yeah. I'm glad y'all go to school. You can understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Some examples. Uh, number three is a very powerful number in God's providence. Yeah. Some examples of the number three are it occurs in the natural 
Well, there are three kingdoms. The animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and the mineral kingdom. There are three stages of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. There are three parts to most animals. They have a head, they have a body, and they have limbs. If they come out with two heads, they are freaks. Y'all don't like me. The three parts to most plants are the roots, the stem, and the leaves. There are three layers to the earth, the crust, the mantle, and the core. I'm trying to tell you that God deals with numbers. In falling, man failed to go through the three stages of the growing period. Since the Bible is God's word for restoring fallen man, it includes many examples of the number three. The Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three archangels, Lucifer, Gabriel, and Michael. The three sons of Adam, Cain, Abel, and Seth. The three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The three decks of Noah's ark. The three kinds of sacrifices by Abraham. The three days of darkness in Egypt at the time of Moses. The three days of separation from Satan at the time of the Exodus. The 43 year course of the restoration of Canaan. Jesus is 30 years of private life and three years of public ministry. The three wise men and their three gifts to Jesus. The three major disciples of Jesus. The three temptations, the three prayers at Gethsemane and Jesus' three days in the tomb. You see, I know God has a plan for us. God is too orderly. Uh, God is too smart to just let us go without a plan. For he who fails to plan, plans to fail. But sometimes it seems like God has forgotten all about us. And this is what happened to a man by the name of Job. He lived in the land of us. Job was perfect in his day. He loved God and hated evil. He was a family man. He had seven sons and three daughters. He was rich. 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she donkeys, and a very great household. He was the greatest of all the men of the East. Look at somebody and say, Job had it made. All of his children were doing fine. But one day, God needed somebody Stand up for him against the devil. Yeah. Every now and then, you feel like God and turn the hounds of hell will loose on you. Uh -huh. Well, maybe, brother Ephraim, yes, maybe you one of those God is using to be his champion. Yes, God reached down into the population of men and told Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That in all of the men in the earth, there's none like him. I pick him to stand up against you. In front of the cosmos, the sons of God had presented themselves before the Lord to make their report. And when Satan came, also in their midst, God questioned him and said, what you been doing? He said, I've been walking to and fro. Up and down in the earth. Because this is my domain. Y'all know, know this word is Satan's domain, don't you? And we added this seeking. 
who we may devour. So I can hear God saying, I need somebody to stand up against the devil. I, I'm gonna pick a yes, I'm gonna pick a I'm gonna pick a man. Satan is a supernatural being. He was one of my main angels. He was a cherubim that hovered around the throne. He walked up and down in Eden. I, I fitted him. He was the most beautiful of all of the angels. But he turned on me. And I'm going to show these boys in heaven. These other angelic beings. That a little old man can whoop him. Look at somebody and say, I know who I am. God might pick you for something. Satan made the mistake. He went to God and said, Job ain't no good. Father God, if you take the hedge down, he'll curse you to your face. Somebody is talking about y'all. Take away your big house. Okay. Yes, sir. Lose your good job. Yes, sir. All right. Let your wife walk out on you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. He's saying, I'll make him cuss you to your face. Mm -hmm. One, that man don't love you. He quit loving you a long time ago. And you, if you just leave the church and go back to the club, there are plenty of men out there. Uh -huh. But you got to say this. Say, I know who I am. See, it don't matter what your husband do. It's what you do. Y'all ain't paying me no attention. It don't make no difference what your wife does. Your thing should be between you and God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife, she did so and so and so and so. Hey, what, what? And that made you go back and spend all your rent money? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> made you go sleep with, with that other You better. You all got to sing. You better. You better, something, you better say something. So what that y'all say? You better smell the coffee. Whatever you're doing, if you did it, that's on you. It ain't on your wife. It's not on your husband. When the time comes, you're going to cross over by yourself. I don't know how many, I don't care how many members of a reverend missionary minister or pastor Deborah Clay had in her church. I don't care if her husband was sitting there next to her. When time came for her to cross over, she did that by herself. The only one. And he don't cross over with you. He beckons you to come on. Some things you got to do for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Look at somebody and say, I know, I know. Who, I I know who I am. You know when I have a Elder Jones come preach, he'll talk to y'all. Y'all get up and go tell three people you know who you are. And everybody get up and they're all over me smiling. And when I say it, y'all just look at me like y'all. Go tell three people you know who you are. See what I'm saying? I know who I am. 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 See, when you really know who you are, when you really know who you are, I don't care if they do talk about you bad. That don't change who you are. 
my mama used to tell me, Little William, I don't care what nobody say. You are somebody. And so I wrote this poem about 20 years ago about what my mama told me. And it's called You Are Somebody. It's on a yellow sheet of paper. It's in my office. I find it every now and then. And I remember she told me to say, don't make no do what they call you. You are somebody. I don't care what they do to you. You are somebody. I don't care if they do beating you up. What are they doing? Hold your hand up. You, that don't denigrate who you are unless you let it happen. Well, you got molested, okay? But you are somebody. You've been in jail, yeah, but you are somebody. If you maintain who you really are, no one can take that from you. I tell the women, don't let anybody take away your integrity. I don't care if he call you the B word. That don't make you be one. Y'all, y'all ain't gonna help me because I'm getting in close because I'm getting I'm getting too raw for y'all now. You got some Negroes so stupid. And some women so ignorant. They think that's good when you get called the B word. The devil is a lie. A bee is a dog. And a nasty one at that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> I came here. I'm going to close this. Y'all. He told Job, a God, that you just take down the hedge and I'll make him cuss you to your face. Take away that new car and that credit card and I'll make a cuss you to your face. I came out today to tell you, Job made a mistake. He thought Job was just living for God because of his camels. He thought the only reason Job was living for God was because he had all them donkeys, ten kids, and a big house. He thought the only reason Job was Looking for God is because of the respect he got from the people when he was sitting at the gate. And I came about to tell you, people can turn on you just as fast as they put you up there. One day, God decided to allow Satan to attack Job. So he took the hedge down from around him while his sons and daughters were fellowshipping the oxen were plowing in the field the donkeys feeding beside them yeah. <laughs> the Sabaeans fell upon them killed the servants and took the livestock yeah. while he was yet speaking Another servant came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and your servants, brother Job, while he was yet speaking. The Chaldeans made three bands and took all the camels and killed the servants and scourged everything that was left. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, you see, Satan ain't going to stop till he makes you do the bow down. He wants you to bow down to him. He wants you to forget who you are. Don't never let the devil equate your value by how much you have. Don't ever let the enemy equate who you are by the praise of men. The servant came in, 
said, while your children, there's 10 of them now, yes, were fellowshipping together, uh -huh. his family was not dysfunctional. Wow. A great wind came from the wilderness yes, sir. Yes, sir. and smoked the four corners of the house. Yes, sir. There was no hope of escape. Mr. Job, they're all dead. Job got up, rent his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down and worshiped God and said, Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan was mad now. He was in a rage. He thought everything I done done to this man should have broke him by now. He's saying to somebody in here, as much as I done done to her, she ought to be broke by now. That's why your praise is so valuable. When you miss a praise chance, you miss a chance to put them to a flight. Anybody in here been on attack by the devil? You ought to give God a praise. Look at somebody and say, I know who I am. Oh God help this man close this. Satan was mad. He couldn't break him by taking his money. Couldn't break him by killing his kids. Couldn't break him by taking his house. Break him by taking away his friends. So he got permission to afflict Job's body. The Bible says. He had sores from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. It was so bad, he got the itching. He sat out on an ash pile and got a piece of broken pottery. Started scraping the sores on his body. He couldn't get no peace. At night, he was tormented. At noonday, he was in pain. His friends looked at him in pity. Satan was mad. He afflicted his body. Mrs. Job didn't have no friends no more. She was shamed of her husband. The mighty man had fallen. She wasn't respected anymore. Her girlfriends now is talking about her behind her back. So we're all in fine clothes now. She thought she was something. They done lost everything. Mrs. Job couldn't take it no more. She looked at him and said, why don't you just curse God and die? Job, in his mind, he said, I can understand everybody else leaving me. But not you, baby. Y'all don't like me. You, you, you don't leave me. You see my condition. Just give me a chance. I get back up. Yeah. Don't, don't. Oh. Come on, Pastor. Somebody give me a drink. Can you? Ain't nobody around even give me a drink of water. Nobody to scratch me. Oh, you do smell too bad. Yeah. I'm alone. So 
said it in the Because <laughs> God died. God don't love you. So I wish I had never been born. God wiped the day off the map that I was born. Take it off the calendar. Take it away. <sighs> but I, I know. I'm hurting yet. Help us to keep moving. Help us to go forward. Help 
Help us to not turn back. Help us to not look to the left and the right. But you are our help. And we look into you, God. And we thank you, Jesus. Look at yourself because I know who I am. If you know who you really are, I know who I am. Jesus. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Jesus. The man of the van. Jesus. Lord help me. But I'm hungry. He's my bread. But I'm weary. Churches. 
the Bishop G.E. Patterson. Who you got up and said yes, Lord. The whole church gonna shout me in the back. My thing is yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And when you say yes, Lord, whatever he says for you to do, that's what it means. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your mind. Stop waiting. Somebody come get you. Shout down. I think I'm gonna give him a praise. Saved and be successful. So we'll give him a praise for that. I want my two other sons that ain't in church. I want them to get saved, be in church. I'm going to give him a praise for that. I believe God. He is my Oh, Calvin, he ain't gonna never change. I ain't gonna praise God for him. I ain't gonna do it in public because I don't have to do that. He said, but if you testify about me before me, I'll do it before my father that's in heaven. You wanna be one of them secret praises. He wants somebody to stand up and take a bullet. If I have to. Y'all, y'all, y'all missing. You got people in here right now. If they would release that praise, power that's in them, they can set free. They can be in this stuff for years. They think the key is one thing. God said, if they just praise me, the key is praise. And everything. And praise. I, I pray the one hand way. Yeah, but if you got a mouth, he said, he didn't say a couple things about Praise the Lord. He said, let everything that's got breath. All right. I'm going to have to get Sister Wolf up. Come in and do a revival. She grabbed the window down by the scruff in the neck. Grab my boss off the seat. Beat the devil. That's right. I know some missionaries. Don't call them the river now. She ain't gonna do that no more. She used to do it. Then she got famous. Now he got on the thousand dollar dresses. And they ain't gonna do it. But you get one of them real missionaries that's still trying to make it. One of them real folk ain't thinking about how much you're gonna give them. They don't let the Lord take over their life. What one of them pray for you? I guess I'm gonna have to send for Bishop Alex for y'all. I'm getting ready to let y'all go. 
Sister Foster, I've been waiting on you. See, I know what the, I know what people need in here. Some people are choosing not to bother. Somewhere in here, you're gonna learn a lesson. You can only sit down on God so long. Thank you. 
shit man is happening to me. Look at this, I know who I am. I'm a child of the king. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Josh. Yes, Lord. God don't have you young preachers here for nothing. He got a reason for it. You ain't here by accident, sis. Reason for you being here. But if he tell you everything, he won't, it won't be by faith. Tell the Lord yes. Is that over our door? When you come in? What's over our door? It's supposed to be a plaque out there. Is it God will arise and build or is it yes, Lord? Or did they take it down? Look over the top of that door. That's all right, if it's not that, somebody removed it. But I think it's yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Elder, pray for you. I told someone the other day that Elder Hastings had never missed giving his times. Never. That I know of. And all these 30 some odd years. Y'all keep encouraging Steve and them. This witness looking like a little girl. It's you. I thought you was one of them kids. I did. Got some chill child braids on. Come over this way so she can't just won't get your blessing. I'm telling you, people are like this, that, and the other. They ain't got no help to send you to, and no hell to put you in. He said, Press them. Boy, if I could, I'd call Mother Terry's spirit down, but I know that's wrong. The slap he can is angry. She won't raise her hand. Blessed. 
Muévanse. Sí, eso. Sí, es. Muévanse. to make you rule over me.